Gamers got a huge win when no rest for the wicked CEO Thomas Mahler rebuked game designer and consultant Alexander Brazi, who was recently attempting to justify DEI practices. Mahler succinctly said he was fired. Before we get to this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at the Trent Report. Wrote this up over at that park place on Friday. And Thomas Mahler, the CEO of Moon Studios GmbH, uh, which is the the company that is developing No Rest for the Wicked, rebuked game designer and consultant Alexander Brazi, who recently attempted to justify DEI hiring practices. So in response to a lengthy thread, which we're not going to cover here, covered in a previous video, justifying DEI practices by Wardog Studios' CEO, Jade Law, Brazi posted this. Yeah, it would help if people understood effective DEI is about helping people who historically didn't have the network to get eyes onto their work have a chance due to their equal skill. The whole merit smearing is so banal, presumptuous, and out of touch with reality. Utterly ridiculous comments, given the fact that DEI is all about quotas based on race and sex, which, <laughs> which means that it's not based on merit. So the idea that people are getting hired based on race and sex and not merit is baked in to DEI. So that is indeed a extremely valid criticism of DEI. And that is why it is being challenged in the courts on various, various fronts. Uh, we obviously saw the racial quotas uh, at the Ivy League get overturned when they were discriminating against uh, Asians. We are now seeing a challenge specifically with the Walt Disney Company, with America First Legal filing an EEOC complaint, which we believe is to be the first kind of move to actually suing the company uh, for discrimination. I think there was also a, a lawsuit that just kind of went through in um, the Supreme Court ruled about a, a police officer and how she was kind of moved around. And then I was actually just watching um, a video recently where uh, the state of, I think it was the state of New York or the city of New York actually settled with a bunch of teachers uh, who were fired because they were uh, deemed toxic, toxic whiteness. They were part of toxic whiteness. And uh, so they were actually moving their um, cases through the court. And what actually ended up happening was uh, because the, the, their case was actually was not dismissed. The uh, the city or the state, I forget which one it was, actually had to settle with them because they didn't want it to uh, keep going through the court system. So this the whole DI stuff is being dismantled slowly but surely, probably taking a little bit too long, probably never should have been started in the first place, but it is being dismantled because it is immoral and uh, it is uh, effectively, uh, looks like it's illegal in many cases. So Mahler, Thomas Mahler, actually responded to uh, my initial coverage about Alexander Abrazi because uh, he he did work on the game. He claims to have worked on the game, claims to have worked at Blizzard, claims to have worked at Riot. He owns a consultancy uh, company as well. But this is what Thomas Mahler said in the comment section of, uh, of, my, of my YouTube video covering Alexander Abrazi's uh, initial uh, comments here. But Thomas Mahler said this, this person is not affiliated with Moon Studios in any way whatsoever anymore. We contracted him for a short stint and he was fired for bringing nothing but friction into our team just for your information. So Thomas Mahler rebuking Alexander Brasi, noting that he was fired by Moon Studios, because all he did was bring friction into their team, causing problems. So huge. I think this is a huge win for gamers. This is exactly what Grums, Mark Kern, has been um, telling these developers to do. If they have any of these kind of woke consultants that they worked with, what they need to do to win gamers over is to say that they fired them, they they removed any kind of their taint from the game, and they won't be doing it anymore. They won't be bringing on those kind of like woke consultancy people anymore. And that's exactly what 
Thomas Mahler has done here. So I think this is a huge, huge win for gamers. Um, and it looks like he has a strong opinion about consultants here too. Uh, back in March at the height of the Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, controversy, he kind of signaled against Sweet Baby Inc. and uh, consultancies like them. We've, we've covered a few here on the channel. You've got like Gamer X, you've got Black Girl Gamers. There's a bunch of them. There's a whole list that's being circulated. Uh, but he wrote this. He says, we don't really hire consultants, so pardon me if I'm ignoring all your messages. I pretty much agree with what uh, Steve Jobs had to say about consulting. And then, so you're probably wondering what Steve Jobs had to say. Well, I did the transcription here. He says, I don't think there's anything inherently evil in consulting. <laughs> inherently evil, right? <laughs> wow. I think that without owning something over an extended period of time, like a few years, where one has the chance to take responsibility for one's recommendations, where one has to see one's recommendations through all action stages and accumulate scar tissue for the mistakes and pick oneself up off the ground and dust oneself off, one learns a fraction of what one can. Coming in and making recommendations and not owning the results, not owning the implementation, I think is a fraction of the value and a fraction of the opportunity to learn and get it better. You do get a broad cut at companies, but it's very thin. It's like a, it's like a picture of a banana. You might get a very accurate picture, but it's only two-dimensional. And without the experience of actually doing it, you never get three-dimensional. So you might have a lot of pictures on your walls. You can show it off to your friends. You can say, look, I've worked in bananas. I've worked in peaches. I've worked in grapes, but you never really taste it. That's what I think. He then concluded, and I think this is the best part here. You're also a variable expense. And in hard times, you find yourself. And then he kind of trailed off, obviously indicating that uh, you're probably one of the first people that is let go or is uh, no longer employed at the company because you're a variable expense. So uh, strong thoughts there, uh, obviously from Steve Jobs on consulting and uh, Thomas Mahler saying that those are uh, his similar to his thoughts on, on it as well. Uh, and just kind of a little, little prop he props here to, to the game. It did release into early access on Steam on April 18th. So you can go on Steam and and purchase. I think it's like 30 bucks and uh, release into early access. The official description says this. From Moon Studios, the award-winning developers of Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will of the Wisps comes no rest for the wicked. A visceral precision action RPG set to reinvent the genre. Early access to the game includes the first chapter of the game's narrative campaign, daily and weekly bounties and challenges, an assortment of quests, boss battles, a variety of weapons and armor, as well as a replayable dungeon and the purchasing and furnishing of a home. The game is expected to include four-player co-op multiplayer and expanded story more maps, farming, as well as more bosses, weapons, armor, items, bounties, and challenges. So it looks like it has a lot of stuff happening for it. And uh, Thomas Mahler, I think, is signaling to gamers that, hey, we are rejecting these woke consultancies. This guy who is uh, trying to justify DEI, we fired him because all he was doing was causing friction with his team. So I think this is a huge win for gamers. I think uh, I think this could be a game worth checking out now. Let me know what you guys make of this in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable to each other, but to always speak the truth.